A well-known Austrian author, Karl Emil Franzos, wrote about Chernivtsi. Would you like to see a corner of Byzantium? Here it rises before your eyes, the metropolitan residence, a gorgeous edifice, and nearby a magnificent cupola of the synagogue, a little piece of the Orient. He meant the progressive synagogue, founded by Lazar Elias Igel, the chief rabbi of Chernivtsi and Bukovina. This happened in 1872 when the Jewish community of the city had split into the Orthodox and Progressive parties. Design of the synagogue was commissioned from Yulian Zakharievich, a talented architect educated at the Viennese Polytechnic Institute, who by that time worked on construction of the railroad from Lviv to Chernivtsi. In his design of the synagogue, the architect went for a novel, both stately and liberal style of romantic historicism a style called the Viennese Renaissance by one of its creators, Theophile von Hansen. In the 1850s, Ludwig von Furster, Hansen's senior partner, designed two impressive synagogues in the Temple Gasse of the Viennese suburb Leopoldstadt and in Dohanje Street in Budapest. In these romantic historicist projects, Furster constructed a new Jewish style as a combination of Moorish, Byzantine, and Romanesque elements, with certain references to the biblical descriptions of the Temple of Jerusalem. The pioneer of the Romantic historicism in Chernivtsi was Josef Halavka, a prominent Czech architect who was educated in Vienna. Deeply interested in the architectural heritage of Bukovina, he managed to apply the Viennese innovation to the design of the Orthodox Metropolitan Residence and the Church of the Three Holy Hierarchs, as well as the Armenian Church in Chernivtsi. Zakharievich, like Kalavka, was seeking inspiration in local ethnography and art history. He was enchanted by the folk art of Bukovina and Galicia and became the first collector of Jewish paper cuts. An ideal plot for the new synagogue was chosen in this city center, far away from the old Jewish quarter. The compound was designed to have included, besides the synagogue, the caretaker's house and a landscape motif shaped as a Star of David. However, the caretaker's dwelling was never constructed. It is known to us only from the publication in the Viennese Allgemeine Bauzeitung, edited by Forster. The synagogue layout was a tripartite scheme, borrowed by Forster from the biblical Temple of Solomon, with its courtyard, the holy place, and the holy of holies. The bima, a platform for reading the Torah, was shifted eastward, close to the apse with the Torah ark, as was the custom in other progressive synagogues. Zakharievich employed in his design a well-tested mixture of historical styles in which the Moorish motifs prevailed. A relatively new element was the magnificent cupola, an allusion to the temple courtyard with the sky above it, and a powerful sign of the Jewish presence in the urban landscape of Chernovitz. In his construction, Zakharievich used cast iron columns, an invention of the industrial era. These supports bore two tiers of open women's galleries. Their seats were arranged as in the theater to enable the women to see and hear the service unimpeded. The main facade of the synagogue was flanked by two projections housing staircases. These could allude to Yachin and Boaz, the two columns at the entrance of the Temple of Solomon. The Torah Ark, which contained the Torah scrolls, was designed separately, differing from the initial project, but in agreement with the overall Oriental style. Even after completion of his work on the Chernivtsi Temple, Zakharievich did not forsake his interest in Oriental art. After his move to Lviv, where he became dean of the construction department and then rector of the Lviv Polytechnic Institute, he continued to study oriental motifs and showed interest in synagogue architecture. Indeed, in the 1890s he designed a reconstruction of the Reform Synagogue in Lviv. Meanwhile, the progressive congregation of Chernivtsi accepted the project of their new synagogue with great enthusiasm. The construction plans were endorsed and contributions were readily given. On May 8, 1873,
the chief rabbi and the orthodox archbishop of Bukovina laid the cornerstone of the synagogue. During the next five years, the temple of Chernipsi was built under the supervision of the city master builder, Anton Fiala. The contractor was Josef Gregor, who built the metropolitan residence. The stone was cut at the workshops of Laurent Kukurudza, while the columns were cast in the factory of Archduke Albrecht in Ustron. The sumptuous edifice, inaugurated in 1877, astonished the citizens and guests of Chernivtsi. It was photographed from different viewpoints, as for example, from the west and southwest. Together with other landmarks of Chernivtsi, it appeared in countless postcards inscribed with greetings from the city. The postcards often depict lively urban everyday scenes. In 1936, preparations for the 60th Jubilee of the Temple had begun, and a year later the Book of Jubilee was published. It shows the Torah Ark, the pews in the prayer hall, the women's galleries, the squinches of the cupola, and the cupola covered with oriental ornament. In July 1941, the Nazi invaders desecrated the synagogue and torched it. It stood in ruins until 1959, when the Soviet administration reconstructed it as a cinema. It acquired features of the Stalinist architecture and changed beyond recognition. The interior of the former temple was redesigned later in the international architectural style. Only in 1991, with the revival of the Jewish community in Chernivtsi, was a memorial plaque fixed on the building, which remained a cinema. Notwithstanding painful losses, the progressive synagogue of Chernivtsi persists in the memory of the community, in old photos and postcards, as well as in a computer reconstruction, which was prepared at the Center for Jewish Art of the Hebrew University of Jerusalem. Based on the drawings by Zakharyevich and on archival material and recent measurements, it gives an impression of the synagogue's former exterior and interior, the colorful design of the Torah Ark and the sacred space, which was destroyed by cruel vandals. However, the memory of the synagogue's past glory cannot be erased.